All right, what's up guys? All right, so what we're gonna be doing today is basically going through a bunch of websites. Um, I'm gonna be telling you what people are doing right, what they're doing wrong, um, and I'm gonna try to basically just kind of walk you through what a good martial arts website should be. So um, my name is Wukash. Um, I've been doing user interface design for, I don't know, like 18 years. I've done stuff for Corvette, Apple, Google, I've done it for startups. I work for AAA games now. Um, so I've kind of been around, you know. Uh, and yeah, so we're just going to kind of go through these. I'm going to tell you the key things to kind of keep in mind when you're either trying to make a website or you're trying to make careers better. Um, so what we're going to be going through is uh, templates for right now. So uh, if you want to submit your website, just go ahead and DM me or send me a message or a comment or however you want to do it. Uh, and then we can kind of review your site. We can kind of tell you how to make it better. Um, and I'll do this all for free. So if you guys want to shoot me a comment down there, uh, we can get that going. All right. So let's jump into it. So the first one we're looking at is uh, just a standard uh, template. And the thing I like about this right away um, is that you have this huge uh, call to action. So basically what you want is the second that somebody like hits your site, you want them to know exactly uh, what to do, right? Like even if they don't necessarily, like they're just going to maybe explore, you could kind of convince them to, to maybe sign up for a class or to do a thing, right? So you have to think about naturally how you want to do that, right? Like what are you going to do to bring those people into uh, your ecosystem, right? Which is your martial arts school. So I do love this. Um, basically this our instructor button and tell me more, right? So the second that you uh, go to tell me more, um, you're kind of like pulled in, right? So you hit that button, it's probably going to go, oh, look at that. So this is a, a really bad way of handling a error. Um, that's kind of funny. So we're kind of looking at a preview of a thing. So these are kind of like previews of templates that you can kind of purchase. Uh, so it seems like that one's not fully set up. So, uh, anyway, um, what I'm guessing that's going to take you to is something that's going to kind of tell you more. It kind of hooks you right away. Um, they got a nice little call to action at the very bottom that says scroll down. So you can kind of see that here. Um, you guys can't see my mouse, but you can kind of see the things that I'm highlighting. So just kind of look out for those. Uh, so basically what you're seeing here is a very clear call to action, right? The first thing um, that you see is something that tells you what to do next, right? So somebody lands on your site, they're either gonna be interested or they're gonna to wanna to sign up, right? They either know who you are already or you have to educate them who you are. So it's really smart the way that they set this up. Um, it is just a template, keep that in mind so you can kinda of change these around. Um, and maybe let's go back a little bit too because there's a bunch of different ways of building your websites. A lot of people think that you have to code it from scratch, you have to do this whole like hoopla and that basically gets like really expensive, right? Not everybody has the money to like go in and like spend, you know, like 10 grand on this website. So what you can do is you can do something like Squarespace which has like a monthly uh, fee or you can do like a WordPress template which is even cheaper than you're only paying for the server um, and then you can like install a template on there. They're super low cost. You basically pay for it once uh, for most of them. Some of them have um, monthly reoccurring fees but for the most part WordPress stuff is 100% um, free once you purchase it, right? So you don't have to pay like a monthly thing like you do on Squarespace. The nice thing about Squarespace is there's no setup. You basically go in uh, and again, I'm not, or I shouldn't say again, um, for the first time, I'm not actually uh, sponsored by these guys. So anything that I say is not sponsored. It's not official. It's not, it's just my opinion. It's what I actually think. I've used these platforms. Um, and I, I still use them right now. Like WordPress is one of my main things that I, I build out most of my websites in. So it's like got enough flexibility to it where I can kind of like push pieces around, but it's also got um, basically like all, it's, it doesn't take as like long to like build it from scratch. So I like it better because of that. Um, but if you don't want to build it, you don't want to push around too many pieces, you want it super duper simple, you probably want something like Squarespace. So there's a bunch of them out there. Maybe I'll do a video uh, just on those. If you guys are interested in those, just kind of how to like level up your, your martial arts website, then we can talk about that. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about what makes a good website. So let's keep going. Um, so once we scroll down, um, one thing that I do and don't like, um, I do like that they have these little buckets. I don't like how the hierarchy works. Um, so basically, 
how a hierarchy works is you want to kind of like lead the eye. You want people to kind of like look at something very specific. In this case, it's like the headers are like they're green, but everything feels kind of like claustrophobic and like smash into one space. I think it would look a lot better if there was only three of these. Um, I don't like how they're laying it out, but but it does, it works okay, right? There's just like a lot of things on the screen right now, right? Um, if I move my window, you can kind of see there's like a bunch of stuff down here uh, at the very bottom. Um, where it says like open door policy and all these. So um, it kind of gets gets a little cluttered. I feel a little claustrophobic in it. <laughs> so you gotta make sure that uh, you have like nice space and a lot of room to breathe. Um, they do give you like these key points too, right? So whether you're like uh, self-defense, you have women self-defense, you have uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, maybe you have karate, whatever it might be, right? You want to highlight those things, the things that you're really known for and that you really want to push, right? So one of those uh, ways of doing that are kind of like these bulleted lists that people are doing. So um, that's good. But again, this all kind of feels like cluttered. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it works okay. Um, but for the most part, I think that this site is pretty good. Um, I like it. For the most part, uh, a lot of the stuff is really cool. I'm not a huge fan, fan of uh, menus that kind of overlay everything because it's just kind of like it feels muddy, right? Like you'd see all the stuff behind it. Um, and this stuff is just kind of like, um, I guess, blends into the background. It doesn't feel really great. So I do like it kind of integrated into the top of the menu and then have it scroll with the page as you kind of scroll down. Um, and maybe we'll see an example of that in one of the websites. Uh, but that is my preferred way of doing it. Um, another thing you want to check out and a really easy way of checking this out and this is this is a pro tip I'm about to show you this um, uh, and we can eventually I forget what the stats are but the stats are something crazy like I think like 70% of people don't quote me on this um, I'll try to fix it if uh, this is not true but I think something like 70% of people look at websites on mobile so this is super duper important this is something that people don't do on their websites this is like i see this on so many martial arts websites like guys guys listen to me listen to me <laughs> make sure that you are doing mobile sites please do the mobile sites um basically what that means is when you uh look at these on a mobile browser that they will um essentially look good so a way of doing that um to make it look good and to see if it looks good on mobile and an easy way of doing that is to right click, you go to inspect, uh, and I'm using Chrome browser too. This is a little bit different in uh, every single browser, but I use Chrome, I like Chrome the best. Firefox is pretty good too, but I don't know how to do this in uh, Firefox, I would have to kind of poke around, but it's probably the same thing. Um, so what you do is you right click, you go to inspect, and then you hit this little button down in the bottom left hand corner, um, and uh, you guys can't see my mouse, but you can see where the thing pops up, right? So you have like um, the thing all the way to the left, and then you have the one to the right. It looks like a phone with a bigger screen behind it. You click that, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna put it in like a mobile version of it, and you're gonna see what it looks like on a phone. So this is so important because so many people view websites on phones now, not on their desktops. So you actually should be designing this view and not the other one that we were looking at. So this is extremely important. If this doesn't work, don't get the template. Or if you're, you know, if you're purchasing this from like a development house or somebody's building this out for you, super duper important that you have these because so many people are looking at this stuff. I'll give you guys stats later. It's crazy for sure. People are looking at these, this stuff on their phones. And a lot of times people are driving around to different places too, right? So they're kind of just like, you know, they might look at their phone and look at the website on their phone before they walk in and stuff too. So you want to be impressionable there um, as well. So this actually looks better on mobile than it does on the regular desktop, right? Because it doesn't feel so claustrophobic. Everything's kind of segmented out. Everything kind of feels more natural, right? There's only like one thing at a time. You don't have like all these things kind of like basically like hitting you in the face all at the same time, right? Like feels a little bit more natural, which is really nice. Um, so you kind of can consume this stuff in a little bit better of a way. So that's the mobile version of that website. Let's jump to the next one. Okay. So here's another one. Uh, I do really like this one. This one kind of has the little thing that I was talking about. Um, so up at the very top, you can kind of see uh, the navigation up here. Uh, it basically kind of scrolls with the screen uh, and 
what's important about that is you always want navigation to be like visible at all times. So what people do is they'll kind of have this navigation, just kind of like scroll with the page. Super smart, you should definitely do it on your website. It's the best way I think of doing it. There's a lot of data showing that if you um, hide this stuff behind like one of those hamburger menus, people aren't gonna see it. So uh, this is the best way to do it. Just expose it right away. Don't hide it anyway. You want people to see all the different pages, all the different things that you're, you have to offer. Another great thing, again, uh, what they're doing is they're giving you a nice big header so there's like a really great hierarchy to this um and basically what a hierarchy is is like how your kind of your eye like leads from one thing to another uh to another and you want to kind of like lead the eye in a certain way right so this uh does that so there's like a really good hierarchy on this is the first thing that you read and then you got to get some support um you know text with this which is kind of nonsense right now um, but you can kind of change it if you buy like a template and then you have the call to action again, right? So they're doing a really great job. <clears throat> the one thing that they're not doing a great job of is like segmenting the two different types of people that are going to be coming to your website. So you basically have the people that are convinced that uh, they want to go to your school um, and like kind of just want to sign up, right? They just want to know what they have to do to sign up, um, whether it's, you know, just calling, whether it's coming in, whatever it might be. You got to kind of like put yourself in the shoes of the person that's kind of going in there. Um, and then the other one is that they have nothing, uh, they don't know anything about your school, right? So they have like nothing to go off of. So you have to kind of educate these people, right? Um, so the free lesson is super enticing. Um, and you could kind of build it into your flow to kind of tell people like more about, uh, the school and stuff too through that free lesson but i do like segmenting that out right away there's no guesses there's no surprises so it's good to just kind of break those out right away um and then i'm guessing these are probably different images yeah that you can kind of go to it's kind of cool it's a nice little navigational element um i do love this okay so this is really really great design so everything is kind of segmented they have a really great you know call to action for the number um, they show you the address and then they show you their their working hours super smart, right? Those are like the main things that you kind of look for when you're looking for a school um, So that's great that they have that there They have like a little blurb here that could kind of talk about, you know Maybe the owners whatever it might be you want people to kind of like familiarize themselves with the people that are running the school Right because ultimately like that's what's really gonna make people stay right if you um, tell them that this is like a super serious school that you know you take this very seriously or or maybe that it's just fun right some people are just looking for fun they don't want like a super serious school where they're going to get beat up right so you want to kind of sell it to the kind of person that you want to teach right so this would be a really good place to do that um then we kind of continue i like this a lot better okay so going back to this other site which one do you guys think is better right all this stuff kind of smashed together all at once people don't know where to look there's just like a lot of stuff or something more like this where you basically have a nice segmentation of all your information right so i like three bucket lists it's like a weird psychological thing in my brain i think that like three is like a good number it's not too overwhelming it doesn't give people too much to think about but it doesn't feel like there's not enough right like two doesn't feel like there's enough four feels like there's too much three is just like for me like a perfect spot um so basically you can kind of break down your main points here um, and then you can just tell a little bit about the owners here too, or maybe like some uh, not scary picture, because that's kind of a scary picture. I'm not sure why they chose that. <laughs> Super intense. Um, but you know, you could have something down here. Maybe it's uh, quotes from people that have been at your school. Maybe it's quotes from the instructors, whatever it might be. Like you really want to sell like the gut feeling of that school, right? Like brand is so important. That's another thing we can talk about later too, is like the brand, right? Like these are very clearly branded web pages. Um, they have really clear colors. You have like this kind of like dark purple in the background. You have this really great like red logo. Everything kind of goes together. They use those same two colors everywhere that you go. Um, so here, let me remove. Uh, whoops. It looks like it's going to reset this entire web page. Okay. Yeah. So this is really what it's going to look like. Um, they had like a little header from the uh, marketplace that I was kind of using. So I just wanted to have it like super clear so you guys can kind of see uh, everything on the website without distractions. So um, yeah, so these guys, they, they do a really great job. Um, they have like all the instructors down here and stuff too. And another thing too, along those uh, lines of brand is they have really nice pictures, right? A lot of times it's just worth like spending that extra, you know, like 30, $40 on like a really good photographer. So just having a day where you just have all your instructors come in, make sure they have a clean gi, 
um, make sure that you know like they look good make sure that it's like super professional and you can just get really nice pictures taken of people right like a lot of times it's not that expensive but look how nice this looks right that looks super professional like I would want to train here like everybody here looks like they have personality it looks like they're super intense and it tells me a little bit about everybody too so I think that it's great um, and then the very end once you've gotten to almost uh, just kidding I thought that was the end um, I do actually like having these more at the end because it's like you've learned about the school um, you want to like contact them you got all the info that you need and then you kind of like do um, this pass on like trying to basically like get them to sign up for your class so actually I would put this a uh, little bit further down um, and then they have like a little FAQ section uh, they have like a latest news section um, you know unless like your school actually has news and you guys are like setting tournaments up and things like that or maybe like there's like days off that you want to kind of promote and stuff like that uh, might be okay to have here i tend to like rather have that on social media because people are actually following social media more than they do websites so i think it would be more natural to have something like that on your social media um so i wouldn't actually put that in your template and you can remove stuff like this in templates usually super easy it's usually just like removing that section um, and then the next section is just kind of like a flyout menu of all of the, or it's not really a flyout menu, but it's like a, basically a little interface that gives you the location of the place, which is nice. Um, I do like uh, less like stylized maps because it's kind of hard, you know, to tell like where you are on these maps, but it does fit brand wise. So you can do it if you do it right. Um, I would like a little bit more contrast on this just so I could kind of like read all this stuff a little bit better. There's like accessibility things. Certain people, you know, can't read certain things if, you know, the contrast isn't high enough. And we can kind of go into that again later videos, but that's more advanced uh, accessibility stuff. Um, and at the very bottom, where are we at the bottom? We are at the bottom this time. All right, cool. I can't actually see the scroll bar because uh, my camera, which is here, is in the way. Um, so at the very end, uh, they kind of do like a recap. Uh, I wouldn't, I would just get rid of this recent post stuff. I think that that's useless. Um, this is kind of nice. Gives you all the contact information. And then, uh, if they have like an email list or something, it's kind of nice to have them subscribe to that. So this website's actually really nice. Um, I would definitely highly recommend this. Um, and one thing along the lines of accessibility too, that a lot of people don't really talk about and, um, I know a few people that have actually been sued over this recently. So you need to make sure that your website is accessible. So what that means is basically you're adding like alt tags onto your images. Um, you're making sure that it's like accessible for blind people, for people that are deaf, for, you know, there's like a bunch of different requirements. So most dev houses, if you say specifically that you need it to be accessible, they should do it for you because what's going to happen is people are going to come to you and they're going to try to sue you if you don't have an accessible website and it literally happens and it's happened to so many people hopefully they fix this sometime soon because it feels super shady that people are doing this because they're literally making careers out of this but you need to make sure that your site is accessible because somebody might come to your website and just end up suing you for a bunch of money so whenever you um, have this done by somebody make sure that you ask them that it's accessible because it's super duper important they can sue you for a lot of money and i don't want that to happen to you guys because it's happened to people that i know so make sure you ask that um now <laughs> let's look at some not so great websites listen to me youtube and instagram and wherever else i'm gonna be uh uploading this to this is what you shouldn't do okay so <laughs> this website clearly has like no call to action i i land on it like what do i do i have no idea what i'm supposed to be doing um i'm gonna click that little x to get rid of that thing at the very bottom um because it's just part of the template or whatever it's not actually part of the website but you don't actually know like what you're supposed to look at they have the nice three bucket thing but it's all like different colors and it's like why is you know this yellow different from this yellow like they're super close but they're a little bit different it's, it's really weird like brand wise is like doesn't make any sense so um, make sure that when you like make a website you pick like brand colors you you stick to those colors you make sure that you kind of use those across your like all of your templates and stuff like that and again we can kind of go into that a little bit more but we're just going to kind of gloss over it for now um so this one just doesn't doesn't really have a clear call to action everything's just like smashed together like what's even going on you have like this random paragraph then you have like this weird block quote that like even if it wasn't nonsense right now it's gobbledygook and it doesn't really make a lot of sense but even if it wasn't like 
what is this even like why would you need this there's like so many things and then they have images down here and then people feel like they have to put images down here and then everything just gets like smashed together it's just unnecessary like like make sure that your site is nice and clean there's lots of air around things don't be afraid of white space like don't be afraid of white space it's really good for you it's good for the eye it's good for understanding websites it's good for consumption you don't overwhelm people you kind of like lead the eye to where it actually wants to go and people don't miss things right that's why like in the 90s everything was like smashed in together all the websites were just like there's like so much information in one little spot um and uh actually one thing to to know is uh this this advice i'm giving only applies to american websites because you go to like japan and this definitely does not hold true they love everything kind of smashed together in one little spot a little bit of a caveat but uh this only applies to american websites for sure and i'm sure a bunch of other cultures too as well um Another thing too is, <laughs> it's a funny picture to pop up, just person's butt right away. Um, but anyway, uh, so this is another one. Um, this one again, doesn't doesn't have a call to action. Like what am I supposed to do next? I don't know. It's just like a bunch of pictures of like somebody working out and like a random butt shot. And it's like, after that, what, what like somebody just putting on, like what is this even, like none of this like makes any sense to me, right? I get it, like you show the address and stuff, but like I don't, like it just it doesn't have like a really good hierarchy like new york city and like all this stuff like this information like it's all over the place right there's a bunch of different font sizes there's like this font size it says your sport center with a heart of and then new york city is another font size and then underneath that's another font size and then you have the logo which is another font size then you have you know start your fight another font like there's so many different fonts and styles happening here so general rule to follow is that you usually want to have like three to four sizes of things like that's like max you know if you're pushing it of fonts and then you only want to have like one to two styles of fonts so like here there's like a bunch of different styles there's like logos there's like all sorts of like other crazy stuff um oh and i just lost it so uh, yeah so there's like there's so many different fonts here and you want to make sure that you just kind of like focus down to a few fonts right because it just it looks sloppy if you don't um so continuing on again more font sizes uh you have this header it's kind of like crammed in here again there's no there's no like breathing room right like if we go in and i inspect this i can actually edit this code um so basically what i can do is give it a margin and then say like 50 and then zero uh actually let's go more extreme let's go 100. okay so immediately that already looks better right like you're scrolling up here and then you scroll down and you get this nice like airy r classes right like it, it gives your eye a place to rest right whereas like earlier it was just like crammed together it was just everything is like this is like a theme of the day everything's just crammed together so you got to make sure that uh basically you're giving yourself a lot of room to kind of um give the eye resting places right because the eye is um is kind of a muscle somebody at work told me this and I'd never really thought about it this way, but the eye is a muscle, right? If you put too much weight on the muscle, it's going to get tired and it's going to want to give up, right? And like all that clutter and stuff, all this smashing together of information, that's like giving it like a hundred pound weight, right? Like it's just going to get fatigued right away. So make sure you don't fatigue the eye. Make sure you give it space to, to kind of breathe and stuff too. Um, so yeah, so that's one thing to look out for. And then they just have like a bunch of random classes, like here's the, and this is a weird pattern. Like you don't see the information until you hover over it. It's like, it's just not a good, good way of going about it. Cause it's like, it gives you no indication that it gives you times, it gives you no indication that even like hovering over this is going to do anything. Right. I might totally miss this stuff and it might have a lot of really good information. So I would honestly just take this information, like the times and stuff. And I would just put it right underneath the um, the little green text right here that we see, like when you hover over it. So just put it right underneath the strength training, right? Like don't don't have that information hidden when I hover over it. it doesn't make any sense. Um, continuing on, they have like more of the same. See, it's just like this just like doesn't make any sense. Like why would you have two sets of the same thing? It just feels like you're like just smashing stuff in just to smash it in. Um, then we continue down and we have apparently a pole dancing class. Um, but I mean, 
honestly, realistically, the stuff like this does actually happen on martial arts websites. Like you'll go to the website and then it just has these random images and you're like, what are, what are you even, why, why are you putting these images in here? They have nothing to do with the martial arts, right? So you want to make sure that everything on there is relevant, that uh, you have a purpose behind it, whether it's to like show the fun environment, whether it's to show that you guys um, have kids classes, have pole dancing classes, whatever, maybe hopefully not at the same time, but, but whatever it might be, right? Uh, so yeah, <laughs> and then there's more butts. These guys love butts. Um, and then we have this, right? Okay, so nobody in the right mind is ever gonna read all of these check marks. And I'm gonna make this window a little bit smaller because I'm gonna make this full effect. Um, yeah, nobody is gonna basically go through and read all these check boxes. Like at the most, you're gonna get maybe three or four, if you're lucky already, because they're already like inundated with so much crap. Like you're scrolling down, there's so much stuff on this website, so much stuff, no room to breathe. It's just like everything's just crammed together and looks terrible. And then you throw like more check marks at them. I just, I, I wouldn't do it. Um, then we continue on and then we have the very last one, which is kind of a quote section. This, this is actually not terrible. Um, the whole template i'm not really a fan of this part i do like because it's good to kind of like show that people like your your martial arts school that that you are a good teacher that people are saying good things right it's good to kind of reinforce that especially if those people have uh, like a reputation right if you get somebody that's like another martial arts um instructor maybe or maybe somebody that's an influencer on social media and they say something great about your school like it's really good to have that on there so i don't think that this is bad it's pretty well designed right it has like a probably from what I edited earlier but it has like a nice uh, error around it and stuff too so yeah um, I think the very end part uh, to kind of give that hook of like you've been through all the information and now we're gonna give you like you know 10% off or whatever I actually don't think percentages off are a great way of um, doing things I think that people get addicted to discounts but not to free so um, but what do I know um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so on um, this little area here, uh, I think it's good. It's got like a really good hook. It's a great call to action. Um, and, and one thing to kind of like, I guess, rewinding on that, uh, a call to action is basically something that's like super bright that like kind of commands your attention, right? Kind of like this join now button. Um, there is one other thing down here, the info, info uh, at mystudio.com or whatever, the, the email that kind of has the same color, but it's not like blocked out. It doesn't have like a big chunky button to it, right? So your eyes kind of led immediately to the join now, which I think is really good. So you want to have call to actions um, in places that you think that are going to be really important, right? So at the very beginning, you want to call to action because you want people to join your gym, right? You want a nice bright button, something that says like, you know, like here's where you go to get the information that you need. You have to kind of like reverse engineer it, right? And then when you're done with the website, and they maybe aren't like quite convinced yet because they've read through all this stuff, then you give them like a little bit of a discount or my, I would say probably you just give them a free class, right? Just do like one to three classes for free and then just allow them to sign up through the website, make it super frictionless. Like maybe it's just like them putting in their number and then you call them, whatever it might be. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys get something out of this. Uh, it was a little bit of a long video, but I do think that it will help you guys a lot if you guys follow these things. Uh, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. Uh, I will respond to them. I'll try to help anybody out that needs help with their website. If you have a website and you want to like kind of level it up and you want me to kind of critique it, go ahead and you know like I said, uh, shoot me a direct message, email me, shoot me in the shoot me a message in the comments, whatever it might be. But yeah, all right. Hopefully you guys benefited. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.